Hello everyone! I just completed editing some photos on my ski trip in Chamonix, France and I want to share some photo editing tips while they're still fresh in my mind. This is the first part of a three part series and in this one is all about presets. So what are presets? Why I have a gripe in general with some presets? How I use them to edit my photos faster? And finally, how you can get some of our presets for free that I'm going to share at the end of the video. Let's get started by rolling the intro. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm like Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on a journey to become better at this art. I want to be very clear that these techniques don't only apply to my MacBook Pro and Lightroom that I'm going to be using in this video, they apply whether you're using your computer, your phone, your tablet, or if you're using a completely different software like my favorite photo editing app, Polar Photo Editor. Let's start by talking about what are photo presets. So photo presets are actually very simple, so for example, if I like the photo of this photo right here and I want to apply it to other photos, I can come inside of the presets right here inside of Lightroom, then I can go into the little plus inside of the preset panel and I can save it. So I can put a name right here, we're going to call it Ski Hill and we're going to save whatever we want inside of the photo. So here usually I like saving whatever I modified on this photo and I'm just going to be careful to come inside of the light here and remove the exposure. The reason I'm doing this is that the exposure is going to change on every single picture I'm applying so I don't necessarily want to save that setting on all the photos I'm going to apply the preset to afterwards. Then we can click here and we can have access to our preset right down here. So that's how easy it is to save a preset. Afterwards, you can go inside of the options right here and you can share presets for other people. So somebody else can come here and you can import a preset. So again, very simple. And finally, other people can share the presets to you. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do at the end of this video. So stick around till the end if you wanna learn how to get my presets for free that I use to edit all of the photos inside of this ski trip. Now this is my gripe with photo presets. You might have gone online, seen some pictures that you really like from a photographer, go online, pay to buy their presets, then try applying them to your photos and you realize, wait, they don't work at all for your scenario. This is because photo presets are not meant to be a one-click edit solution to all your photos. They're actually just different ways of editing photos and they're a great way to get some inspiration and understand how a photo was edited. But again, they won't solve a photo by only clicking one button and getting the perfect look. So personally, the reason why I use preset is first of all, so inspiration. So for example, here I have the collection from Jim Popsis and I really like going through these just to get an idea of how I could edit my photos. Then I can hover one of here and I can look at the settings, how this photo was edited and how it got to this result and understand how I can apply those techniques. The second reason is that it's really a good way of saving some presets and then applying them through the whole trip. So for example here, I can save a preset for this one like we just did and finally just apply it everywhere inside of the photos so I can really easily afterwards uh, replicate this look throughout all my photos. Finally, I can save a look for later. So for example, if I do another ski trip in a year or two, I can come back and look at these photos and apply the same uh, look to the same photos I'm going to take in the future. Again, it might not be perfect because if the conditions are not the same, so for example, if there is some uh, clouds outside or it's rainy or something like that, the photo preset I created here might not work for the other scenarios. So this is why I have a gripe with photo presets. Now let's look at how I edit my photos using my presets. So first of all here, I use this photo to create a look I wanted to have inside of my photos of the city of Lyon. I wanted something that made the photos look a little bit softer. Uh, so I brought up here the blacks if you look at the curve right here. And then I also made sure that the colors were nice, vibrant, and still very poppy. And also made sure that we could see the sky well so there was a lot of dynamic range inside of the photo. So we can quickly go through the settings here. So nothing too special inside of the light settings here. Like I said, I brought the curve here to bring up the shadows a little bit. Brought the vibrance up quite a lot. Usually I don't do that, but here I think there was really nice colors inside of the buildings. So I need to put that in front. Finally, I did some texture here and that's pretty much it. Very simple uh, preset here. I saved it. And then if we come to the next photo here, so first of all, what we want to do is go inside of our settings here and just make sure we crop it like we want. So I'm just going to do this very quickly uh, for this video because that's not the main point of the video. Then we come inside of preset here. We're going to come here. We're going to look at the presets I have here and we're going to apply Lyon soft and vibrant. And we see we're already pretty close to the result I want to have. So here, um, it's not finished, so it's not perfect. Like I said, applying a preset shouldn't be the final edit. You should always have to tweak it a little bit afterwards. So what I do in this case is actually go through the different settings here. So for example, I'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit here. 
I might want to bring the shadows up a little bit in this picture. Uh, I also apply the mask here, an AI mask, that's going to be for another video, but here I apply the AI mask here uh, to the sky to see the sky better. So you can see here, here I've still tweaked some of the settings to get something closer to the final results. So I think this one actually looks pretty good like this. There wasn't too much to edit, so the preset here allowed me to edit the photo much faster, but it wasn't a one-click edit. In the end, I still had to do some tweaks afterwards, and this is a theme throughout everything else. So now let's look at the next picture right here, and I remember using this picture right here to create the look I wanted for my presets for the shots of the mountains in Chamonix. And first of all here, I went through the different presets I had. So like I said, I love using them as inspiration. So I went here, I went, went through some of uh, Jim Pops's. I also have some from Pierre McKinnon. I think there's some here that look pretty good inside of here, but they were a little bit too intense. They really modified the colors way more. I wanted to do something more realistic, and that's what I was looking for inside of the edited images here. There's also a recommended tab here that is pretty cool. You can go here and see some different ideas. Uh, but I created it, I liked here, so again, there's nothing too fancy inside of the here. Uh, I do push the highlights and the shadows a little bit more. I want to get more dynamic range out of these photos because there's a lot of contrast inside of them. Again, I have a little curve right here, nothing too special. The vibrance here is not as high because I don't want to push the blues as much uh, in this one. I do tweak the blues a little bit here to make them more on the teal side. Uh, this is just because the purple was looking a little bit weird. That's a problem with Sony where the pictures really look purple. Um, so again, I went through all of these, applied a little bit of texture, but again, very simple. Here again, I went inside of here, I created a preset, and then I can come here and apply this preset to my next picture. But if you realize, this doesn't quite look like the other version I have, and this is because I applied even more editing to these photos, and that's what I'm gonna talk about in the next videos. If you're gonna look at a few other examples right here, this shot right here, I was pretty much just applying the presets. So if we go here, I go back to the original version, simply come here inside of our presets and apply the preset here. We're gonna see it's almost perfect. Just bring up the luminance and looks pretty good. So very simple uh, editing here. We're gonna look at the third and last preset right here. And this one is for my photos at night. So I got some incredible shots here with the scene in front, the lighting in the background, the stars. Um, so this one's a little bit more advanced. So if we come here, we're gonna look at this photo right here. We're actually gonna reset it to its original version. Again, um, we might look at what it looks with auto settings. So actually here it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna start by applying those settings and we can go inside of our presets. We can go on Shaman at night. Oh, it's looking already pretty good. We can see here. I might turn it a little bit here, just reframe it to get a better look. But now there's an important thing here. Inside of this preset, there's actually a mask. So we're just gonna come inside the mask here and make sure it's properly aligned with the stars in the background. So this is looking pretty good. I might bring up the luminosity a little bit more and might tweak it a little bit more, but that's the general idea of how I did my shots using the presets. I'm quickly gonna go through a bunch of other photos just to show you how quickly you can edit all of your photos using some presets. So the first one right here, we're gonna apply the city preset. So Lyon, soft and vibrant. Uh, here, we're simply gonna come here, crop it. I do wanna have a crop a little bit like this. Um, I think something like this looks pretty good. Here, it's a little bit too um, high. So we're gonna bring down the exposure here. And I think something like this looks pretty good. Then if we come on this one here, uh, this one you can see it's clearly way too uh, purple in the general. So I think the preset here is really gonna help getting this right. So here, we're just gonna continue here and we're gonna crop it just to make everything nice and vertical. Again, I'm going pretty fast with these edits. I would actually pass a lot more time on the edits here. We're gonna apply auto setting. Looks already pretty good here, but we're gonna come inside of the preset here, apply our mountain preset, bring up the exposure, and it's looking pretty good here. I think I can just straighten it up a little bit here. Again, looking pretty good. Might bring it up a little bit more, just tweak a little bit of composition looking good. Now if we go at some shots of the night, we're going to use our other preset that we have right here for the night. So we're going to use Chamonix at night. We're going to apply this. We're going to turn this around. It does seem like a lot here of uh, the exposure is not right. So I'm just going to bring up the exposure to bring back more detail in the front right here. I think the contrast is very high. So I might bring the contrast down a little bit just to uh, adjust this. Um, the sky also seems to be not perfect. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna well, go on the mask, 
I'm gonna bring this mask up. Oh, so this was the issue. You see the mask was not properly aligned. So I'm just gonna put the mask. Uh, if you wanna learn more about masking, that's gonna be another video. So definitely subscribe to learn about that. And again, just in a few clicks, this one looks pretty good. Almost finished editing it. We're gonna skip a few photos. This is one of my favorite shots and you're gonna see this one. Simply applying the preset is gonna be almost perfect. So here I'm just gonna start by, as usual, cropping it a little bit, uh, straightening it, and just making sure it's looking good. Apply it to settings, looking pretty good already. But now if we come here and we apply our mountain preset, again, I'm gonna bring back up the exposure a little bit here. And I think something like this looks already pretty good. This one is a little bit more work. So for example, here, I'm actually gonna apply the preset, but it's not gonna look exactly as I want it to in the end. So it's actually looking pretty good here. Uh, but if we look at the final edit here, if we go in my versions right here, we're gonna see that my final edit actually has a lot more red inside of here. So if I wanted to go here, I would go inside of the color settings. I might change a little bit the red to orange to make them look more red. I might play with the reds right here. Uh, make them look a little bit red too. Then go saturation, bring in the saturation of these. Maybe bring down the luminance of the reds. Um, something like this. So this is very quick. Again, I would pass more time tweaking these exactly as I want. But this is how with just a few clicks, I started from the original image here to the finally edited Im image. Again, very fast. This is one of my favorite image from the whole trip. And again here, simply coming here, uh, cropping out the image. Um, coming here, there's actually more, a lot more editing that has to be done on this photo. We're gonna apply the auto settings. We're gonna go in the preset right here. We're gonna apply the mountain preset. We're gonna bring up the exposure here. And this is actually very close to the final edit I applied to this one. So again, if we look here at the final edit I have, uh, we're gonna come here in the versions and we can look at the final edit and we can look at the version we have right now. They're really not that far. I tweaked a little bit the settings. So here it seems like I brought up the contrast a little bit more, maybe brought down the blacks. I played a little bit with the settings like here. I brought up the whites, but again, it's very easy once you have a good preset for a base to adjust the settings and get something that's looking even better afterwards. So if you're wondering why I keep saying that these are close to the final results and they're not the final results, that's because there's two other editing techniques that I use on pretty much all the photos, but these are gonna be for the next two videos in this series. I highly suggest that you go check out the link in the description if you wanna see the full resolution of photos before and after applying the presets and the other edits. So this is a great way of seeing the different steps that I applied to get to the final shot. I'm sure a few of you are very interested to get my presets and I decided to make them free because like I said, it's good inspiration, but you shouldn't be using them to edit all your photos automatically. This should just be inspiration if you have these types of photos that you're trying to edit. So to get access to it to free, you have to go in the link down in my description click on it, it's gonna bring you to a page that's gonna ask you to join my newsletter. Um, my newsletter is gonna be a monthly newsletter when I'm gonna share some of the things I did in last month. So it might be some photo albums on my websites, it might be some of my posts on Instagram, some of the videos I created. So just a bunch of stuff that I did in the last few months, but I don't want them to be too often because I don't wanna be annoying with it. And you can unsubscribe anytime if you want to, there's no reason. Uh, if you don't like the content, just unsubscribe from it. There's no worries at all. So definitely go click the link down in the description if you want to make sure to get access to these free presets. I hope this video was useful and made you understand how presets can be useful. I think there's a lot of misconception here where a lot of people are trying to make money by selling their presets. Uh, it's not necessarily the good strategy in my case because I think it's a good way of learning how to edit a photo, but it shouldn't be used as a way to do a one-click edit on a photo. That's definitely the wrong way of using a preset. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe for the other parts of this series. See you in the next one.